Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor in the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel before floor, an hour before every game. Post up 5R soon as the game ends. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. I'm having a night like the heat. The subscribe button so you'll get all of their content, all of our content uh, throughout the day. Also, check out fivereasonsports.com. Spell that one out. You get the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and others without a paywall and the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. That includes prizepicks.com. That's our official fantasy sponsor. Use the code 5 F I V E. Get your initial deposit matched up to $100. You don't have to spend it all at once. Play two, three, four, five players together. Today, I played a few different things, and thank God, because one of them was way off, but the other one of the other ones hit. So go to prizepicks.com, use the code five, get your initial deposit matched again up to a hundred dollars if you use that code. You can also play the Stanley Cup playoffs, MLB, all of the other sports, and you can pair players from different teams and different sports. Prizepicks.com, use the code five F I V E. And now five on the floor. Ride for my dogs, where here's the thing, you can check the score, hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs, just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all, kept the floor playing, got an all band, y'all seen the block, stop the one hand, and pack with trust, it's power to have the guts, we're here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Here's tonight's floor plan. I've got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. I've got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. Alex Toledo, we lent him over to the post-up show tonight, so you can catch that later if you want to on the channel. The Miami Heat lose game three. In Philadelphia, 99 to 79, they pulled within three at the end of the third quarter. It looked like as bad as the night had gone up until that point that they might have had one more run in them. They did not. Uh, Tyrese Maxey put them away in the fourth quarter. The big stories tonight, the availability of both Joel Embiid and Kyle Lowry. Pretty safe to say that Joel made more of an impact on the game. He wasn't elite tonight, but he did give the Sixers 18 points and 11 rebounds. Whereas Lowry in 25 minutes, no points on zero, four shooting zero, two from three, four rebounds and three assists. The Jim, the heat get 33 points from Jimmy Butler, 14 points off the bench from Tyler hero. No one else on the team in double figures. I know what the story is going to be nationally. And again, we're going into the weekend. So it's a little bit different because you don't have, you know, all of the talk shows going it's going to be about Embiid. But to me, and I'll go to Brady on this first, to me, and it wasn't about Embiid tonight, right? Like, I mean, you know, his presence is better than DeAndre Jordan's presence. I give him credit for, for what he was able to contribute. But to me, this was just, a, you know, a crappy performance by the Heat offensively from the very start that Jimmy Butler on his own could not save. That's the way that I viewed this tonight. Yeah, I think there's a lot to talk about offensively with the things they didn't do well. That's, of course, going to be the topic. But they, I should say first that they didn't do a bad job defensively. Like, they scored 99 points. They were at 89 when it really mattered. Like, you look at the point that they were saving on the other end. Like, they did a good job of Joel Embiid. Uh, you mentioned the points and rebounds and stuff, but what would he end up as? Five of 12 from the field, but they were fronting him, bothering him, doubling him. Uh, I said before the game they were going to be helping down off corners a ton just because they're going to force role players to beat you. They kind of did that in this game. Like when we talk about what they did defensively, Danny Green, he had his game of the series because uh, he shot seven of nine from deep. Like I just cannot see that happening another game in this series because uh, as we saw in games one or two, that doesn't work out. But this uh, this is the offense. And I feel like there's a lot of things to talk about here. We started out in the game where you said, OK, they're they're short uh, on their jumpers. They came out flat. Jimmy Butler was one of the main ones that would came out short and flat. Like every jumper was short. And then he turned it up after that. Uh, but just working backwards really quick, the one thing I just want to touch on from this game that stood out to me more than anything was you mentioned the three-point game end of the third when they looked like they had a comeback in them. Jimmy Butler's looking like really good, bodying guys, getting to the rim. And then they started going to the Lowry, Bam, pick and roll. And we've talked a lot about Bam, pick and roll combos. We talked in game one about Hero, Bam, how great it was. We talked about in game two, the Butler, Bam combo, how great it was. 
Now it was the Lowry Bam combo. But the reason was every time Lowry came off the screen, he had a jumper. He had the pull up jumper just sitting there to be taken, and he didn't take it. What happens next? He feeds it in a tight window to Bam. Then it's Bam not willing to shoot it, and he's looking to his right to kick it or reset at the top. And the thing is, when you're looking to kick against this team, this Philly team overplays a ton. Like we saw, like there were some times where you're like, oh my God, go back door a couple times because they just overplay. But that's the issue, right? Like right there. We could sit here and talk about Jimmy uh, kind of willing them back and, and the shooting overall. But in my opinion, the reason they lost this game straight up is because of that combo right there, like not taking the shots. Like we could sit here and we could talk about zero points for Kyle Lowry and three assists. But that stretch right there is, is what made it problematic for me that I just feel like the unwillingness to shoot when you have a point guard that could feed a guy, but the guy that's being fed is also not willing to shoot it. It just puts your team in a really tough spot. So just looking at that stretch to begin the fourth quarter, I feel like that was more of a tell than maybe the first half was. Yeah, to me, Kyle did not look ready uh, to be back out on the court. I was surprised Spo stuck with Max as much as he did, three of 11, all from three. Um, like, let's just be honest about a couple of things. This is probably the worst offensive game the Heat have played all season. I know that their season low in points was 78. They got to 79. They shot 23% from three compared to 48.5% for Philly. And Philly had been shooting in the sub twenties in the first two games. Um, to me, this is all about that. The shots weren't going in. We can talk about why. I don't know that it was a ton that the Sixers were doing. Um, Danny green had the game of his life, seven of nine from three. I don't think he's going to do that again. I'm going to knock on wood because we have Danny green nightmares as heat fans, but like, how about we just don't help off strong side corners? And then, you know, like there's elements of this where I feel like five of six from Tyrese Maxey, is he really going to go five of six again? I don't know. So to me, uh, yes, it was a great win for the Sixers, but to, it, it, there's no alarm bells where I'm thinking that this is now so, a different series than it was prior to the game. Here's a stat I just put on Twitter. This is just easy math. Heat players other than Jimmy Butler made 15 out of 55 shots tonight. That is what are, what are we at now? My math is bad. It's uh, 27%, 27%, the team other than Jimmy Butler. You're not winning like that. I mean, I, you know, and, and, and I understand, you know, we can talk about the strategic stuff for sure. Um, certainly the intensity, they did not, they came out weird tonight. Um, they were kind of not intense in certain ways they, they had stretches later defensively, obviously where they were, but they were not intense. And at the same time, they were like rushing like they, it, it just, it, you know, and, and then there were some other combinations in the first half. We talk about the insertion of Lowry and yeah, you had to do this eventually. And I did think, and I think Greg, you and I both thought they would wait until they lost the game before they put him in. And now they have lost the game with him in, but it was one thing to go to these hero Oladipo Butler combinations without Kyle now you've thrown something else into the mix where you have four ball handlers on the court at the same time. And at one point they had bam out there with them too. So they had five and it looked like nobody knew who was supposed to defer, who was supposed to go. There was no off ball movement. This was a little bit too mad scientist Spo tonight. Yeah. Um, this might've been a little too deferential to Kyle Lowry who probably should not have played tonight. I would argue and I think we didn't talk about the Kyle thing very much over the past few days because there was so much focus on Embiid. Like everybody's like, is Embiid going to play? How is that going to change things? Well, Kyle Lowry playing changed things tonight. And it, look, it's not always going to change things in a bad way. He's been very important to them this season, but they had, again, it seems like every time that this team has a flow and it, look like during the season, they had a flow with Kyle and the subs, <laughs> And then they reinserted Jimmy and Bam back and it was a transition. So it always seems like with this team that the more pieces they have, the more problems they have, like their depth is a really good thing for being able to fill out a competent rotation every night. Okay. That's what it's good for. But sometimes the depth is a problem when they have everybody available. That's been a consistent pattern this season. And it was tonight. I, I honestly felt that like Kyle wasn't really doing anything out there tonight. Um, you know, I mean, defensively, he was OK, but offensively, just he wasn't you're right. He, he's a non shooter in that situation. And so, you know, at least like you said, you talk about the Butler 
uh, bam, pick and roll. Okay. Jimmy's going to attack during the playoffs. Okay. Maybe not during the regular season, but he's going to attack hero bam. Tyler. We saw it is going to attack. Um, Kyle's not going to attack. I mean, he didn't attack tonight. And so that was really problematic. I, I thought also we can talk about, look, you know, like Danny green's not going to have that game again. You're right. James Harden for all the talk about how well Harden was playing early finished four of 11 and one of seven from three. I mean, he is cooked, cooked like that. There is, this is like, this is his max at this point, 38 minutes and 17 points. Okay. And they still got nothing off their bench. I mean, uh, between Milton, Tybal, Reed and Yang, they scored, what did they get? Five, you know, nine, 13 points. A couple of those were late. Okay. So all of them have annoying faces too. <laughs> Let's just sneak that in there. Well, all of them, every single bench player, annoying at, at, faces. At least you can't see Embiid's now, but I, again, I, I know I'm going long on this, but it's just, I'm with you to a certain degree, Greg, that like a lot of this is not really repeatable for Philadelphia, but what does concern me a little bit for Miami is that, you know, we have seen some games this year where like a lot of players go in a shell at once. Mm-hmm. And, and this did happen tonight. And I would say the single biggest concern was Bam was awful offensively tonight. It's just really bad. I mean, I, and, and, you know, we can talk about the defense and we can talk about the progress he's made and it's not just the numbers being two of nine, but literally I've got Brooke Lopez going through my head as I'm watching Bam turn, turn away from the basket when literally everybody's dropping, you know, six, seven feet back. And, and I just, if that's going to happen, they cannot make the finals. I just keep coming back to that. Some of the shooting will normalize. Struess probably won't be this bad again. Tyler probably won't be two of seven from three again. Um, you know, and all the rest of that. Uh, but, and, and look, Jimmy was 11 of 17 when he stayed inside the three point line tonight. Okay. But, but the things that, that would be concerning are, you know, Kyle kind of working his way back into shape, but the single biggest concern I have tonight, Brady is bam. That's just not good enough from bam. That it's not, that's not going to work. Yeah. I, I think that was kind of what I was hinting at before, just like with that combo. Uh, but the issue is something you hit on a little bit ago was the lineup with, multiple creators, multiple ball handlers. What they, they went to for a little bit of a stretch where they went to Kyle, Hero, Depot, Jimmy, Bam, which what a lot of people before the season on paper would have been saying, oh, that's the death lineup right there. That's the lineup you want to go to at the end of a game. Uh, but it's the conversation we had when we were talking about all the Depot. Like when we were, we weren't discrediting all the Depot when we were talking about him possibly returning. It was that, okay, when you're subbing him in for a Gabe, does the offense look the same? Does there the same movement? Is there the same spacing? When you have that five out there and it's one guy, it's, well, it's two guys running a pick and roll or running a certain set in a two man set. And the other three are sitting there watching. That's just what you're going to get with those five essentially until something happens. Like you can talk all you want about, you know, certain numbers from Struz or certain numbers from Gabe. The one thing you're going to get from them consistently is they're moving, they're screening, they're moving, they're running baseline, they're flying up off screens that it, it causes some off ball movement. When you run that five, it's just a lot of guys that are waiting to get the ball in their hands that it just, uh, I just don't think that's something you're going to want to see for long stretches. And I don't think it's something you want to see at the end of a game because it's not magically going to fix with two minutes left. Like there's got to be, I guess, a healthy diet there where you kind of figure that out. I think the Gabe factors you mentioned, Kyle plugging in for Gabe isn't as simple as maybe we thought it was because Gabe could still as good as Lowry is off the ball. There still is an element of him hunting for the ball and setting guys up. So, uh, Getting back to what you said before, I think the BAM thing can really change things. Like, if he's able to in this game, well, for one, if they had one extra guy step up and not be as bad as they were, it's a, it's an easy thing to say, but they're in this game even more so. Like, if they just have one competent player next to Jimmy out there on the floor, they went through – we could look at Tyler and kind of count him because he had 14 points. He was the only other guy with double digits. Not only did he not have a kind of a rough stretch there, but they didn't even weren't even playing him during that one run. Like he was not in the game in that fourth quarter for a major stretch there that when you're sitting there with Jimmy and, and a bunch and four other guys that are really not don't have it going. Uh, it's just tough. But I do want to add when we're sitting, you're talking about Jimmy, because I don't want to just push his performance to the side, because this is one of those games where he, he just it, something clicks where he just starts getting back to Jimmy form because this is a game where he really was bodying getting guys to the rim and just scoring around the rim at a high level. Uh, And I felt like the reason why it's important moving forward that I wanted to mention is because you're going to have to include Embiid in more of these actions uh, than maybe they did as frequently as they did in the first half, because 
Uh, he was playing really high in drop in this game where he was playing right at the screen where it was two plays in the first half was Jimmy rejecting a screen and going baseline because he had a wide open lane because Jim, there was no help defender because Impede was playing so high. There's going to be those opportunities there. Once the shooting clicks in maybe next game and they have an extra spacer, uh, I think yeah, I, it's got to be something where they can attack the rim. There. Well, I think the thing about Jimmy's game today is you don't usually see him where he's so sort of off point for one stretch of the game and then, you know, really on point. Yeah, yeah. Like I, like I, I really didn't like his, the early part of, of the game for him. I mean, I, the, the standstill threes when there seem to be other options, you can at least go to, you know, they're just, I mean, you have no chance with that. And then it's like all of a sudden he came out in the third quarter and I wonder if Spo said something to him. I'll be curious what's said in the post game. Because it was it, everything was attacks after that. Everything was to the rim. Um, and, and he just changed his entire disposition. But the other point I want to make based off what Brady's talking about, and this gets again back to what we've talked about all year, that it's not, teams have to fit. And Eric has done a great job of sort of putting the puzzle pieces together. He's gone against the convention of just throwing your best players on the floor all together at the same time. Okay. And tonight he did throw all his best players together at the same time. And it's like, it's like a car. Like, I mean, you, you need to grease the, somebody has got to grease the wheels. Okay. Um, like you need a PJ Tucker out there to be screen setting. Okay. Or you need a Caleb Martin, like off ball cutting, or like you said, like you said, Brady, Gabe's always moving uh, Duncan, if he was playing. And I know that we'll, we'll bring that up here after the break, because I thought it very fascinating that my whole timeline, the whole year is why is Duncan playing? And the whole timeline tonight is why isn't Duncan playing? Um, so we, now we've done completely full circle again and it'll switch back again. But like you need players like that, like that is. And, and this organization understands that. And that is why I have felt as much as I love what Depot's accomplished and what he did in game two also um, with Jimmy and Tyler, that it's going to look ugly at times and it's not his fault, but it's just like, none of those guys are used to doing dirty work. It's, it's just not, you know, Oladipo was a primary scorer, an all-star on a playoff team. Jimmy will do dirty work, but again, the ball is going to be in his hands. Tyler is, is a three level scorer type. Okay. You're throwing. And then Kyle, I mean, again, Kyle's a six time all-star who's going in the hall of fame. Like he'll set screens. We know that and all that, but it's not, you need somebody who just like doesn't care about scoring at all. And it's just out there just to make things easier for the other players. He's got to throw a PJ or a Caleb or somebody in there with that group. You can't just putting your five best players on the floor. He knows this. And I was a little bit surprised that they went to it tonight. All right, Greg, I, I want to get to you on some more thoughts. Let's do some of it here. <laughs> After the break though, I do want to tell you about a great sponsor, five reasons sports network. Um, he's a personal injury attorney. If you have any issues along those lines, you got to reach out to him. He handles the medical malpractice, the slip and falls, the car accidents. His name's Eric Rubenstein. When Brady Hawks here, um, Eric, uh, sponsors Brady's work here on the network. And again, he grew up in a personal injury family from St. Thomas university. So he's down here and he's a huge Miami heat fan down here. He also has, uh, the most interesting, uh, Instagram account you'll ever find for a personal injury attorney. It's ask about me. I got you. You'll see him in the white hot, I'm sure, uh, when the series comes back in game five. But most of all, he's just a great attorney. So reach out to the law office of Eric Matthew Rubenstein, again, specializing in personal injury law, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and more. You can find him at 954-829-ERIC. That's 954-829-ERIC. Or ask about me, I got you, on Instagram. I mean, Greg, looking at all of that, like, I, I don't, again, I don't see like issues that are uncorrectable here. Okay. Like, I, I don't think like Philly has grabbed hold of the series, but we know series do change quickly. And I would expect MB to be more comfortable in game four than he was in game three. So that's somewhat problematic. You're right that they've probably had the Danny green game already. Okay. I, I can't imagine knock on something that that's going to happen again. It does look like we've kind of seen the best of James Harden, and there's not much more coming from this bench, right? That's the, so, the Harden is the one guy that I guess you could say somehow he has some renaissance moment and he could have a huge night, like I, I guess. But everyone else has kind of had their 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 moments, right? Now Maxi has had their moment too. Mm -hmm. 
So, it, so is it just well? I, I mean, I think Maxi will have more moments. That's the thing. But, but I guess, I guess, and the question is, is it just well? Yeah, Tobias. Is it just about intensity though? I mean, if they just come out offensively with I, intensity, might be the wrong word. It was attention to detail. They yeah. had like no attention, like being sharp. Right. They, they with their sets, their focus, the off the ball movement, and all that. It just looked like they were just sort of standing around waiting for Philly to f up. Yeah, game. they got they got a little comfortable and something shout out to Azam92 on Twitter. He mentioned that Spo went away from this is a tweet I'm reading. Spo went away from a hallmark of the rotation shift that led to all the recent winning. Jimmy had been starting the fourth quarters and tonight he didn't. The offense in the fourth has had some dread has often been dreadful and that move had been bullying those units. Instead, Kyle and Bam barfed on themselves. So that goes back to a little bit of mm-hmm. what um brady was talking about but like that's Spo's challenge so if like you're asking me what's the takeaway from this game that i really think that we need to look for it's how does Spo now with a full deck of cards play that hand like what hands does he play etc like that's where i think that the the game within the game comes in for spolstra and it's like a it's a first class problem for sure when you have this kind of depth, but Ethan, to your point, like you have to make the pieces fit. They have to work. And to me, it is kind of cycles back to if you shoot your average from three, this, the, the game goes completely differently. So I, there's just a part of me that ha- I just can't overreact, but it, it will be interesting to see how he handles Kyle being back with Oladipo. Cause I think that there's, that Oladipo, that there's a chance he could get shelved here uh, as good as he's looked. Um, I, I just, unless Tyler's being hunted over and over and over again and is not shooting efficiently, um, more Kyle. I, am I wrong? Do you guys feel like that's going to mean less Depot? Well, I, I think it's possible. I, I almost think that the Kyle thing to me looked tonight with the fact that Kyle was so non-aggressive. It almost looked to me like they just wanted to get Kyle out there just to get his feet wet again thinking that like if they drop this one they're still up to one that, that that's sort of what if i'm because I, I know we always looked at it the opposite way we were like well you don't really need kyle until you drop a game but it almost felt like okay playing kyle might cause us to drop a game so let's get it out of the way now as opposed to it being two one and then sticking him in to try to kind of save the day or right the ship and if you look like this again in that game then you have a real problem so they've kind of smoothed that over a little bit I would think, because I would think Kyle would be better in the next one. But like Kyle's non-aggressive play has been a topic of conversation. I mean, a lot of things that happened tonight, stuff we've talked about all year. Okay, I mean, the shooting, look, they shot the ball tremendously well in the last game, okay, which we've talked about. Their shooting has not really been at a high level in the playoffs, and they've still been dominating teams. They shot it really well in game two, and they shot it as well as they shot it in game two, with the exception of Jimmy. They shot it historically poorly, uh, everybody else in this game. Okay. Um, so again, you would think that some of the shooting would come up, but some of the other stuff we've talked about, I mean, Kyle, you know, had some donuts this year where he just didn't look to score. And this was one of those situations. Bam had games where he like, he will not look at the basket. And this was one of these situations tonight. I thought Tyler, Tyler had moments tonight, but there were other moments. And we've talked about this where he's just a little too loose with the ball and with decision-making there. I mean, he's, he's trying to make a whip pass to Dwayne Deadman, like, you know, from a bad angle. And it's like, he knows who he's passing to there. Like that's, he's not passing to Jimmy. He was going to save him there. He's passing to Dwayne. So I, I just, I think some of the stuff we talked about tonight, it was kind of like all the concerns you had about different players on this team with the exception of Jimmy and even Jimmy in the first half, was it was like this with the exception of Jimmy in the third quarter. Okay. Everybody else kind of played to our worst fears tonight on the same night. So what you hope was they get it out of their system. Like Max Struess didn't look like a starting playoff two guard tonight. Okay. Kyle Lowry didn't look aggressive. Bam again, didn't look aggressive. Tyler looked a little sloppy at times. Oladipo looked a little lost at times. This is PJ, too. PJ, P- didn't PJ look was not great tonight. PJ was not impactful tonight. So I guess, Brady, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you think if, if they just don't all play to their worst, you know, impulses uh, or worst tendencies in game four, you're OK. But give me the Philadelphia scenario now to tie this thing, because they're, they're going to come in with confidence to the next game for sure. And they know Embiid's playing, so they can prepare that way. You know, what, what, what's, the, what's the next level for them? 
Well, I think it's a higher level of Embiid, first of all, because like we said, yeah, he had 18 of 11, but this wasn't a great Embiid game offensively. Like I think the next kind of realm is seeing what level he could play at uh, with the injuries, with the mask, uh, everything like that. I see the reason I said Tobias before is because uh, it felt like this is a series all series long where they're going to give up the Tobias factor, where they're going to kind of let him get that post up. They're going to let him to get that open three. And to, to our point earlier, he didn't have a game either with that, like with all those points happening that, yeah, he's the one that could kind of step up. So I feel like if he gets to those spots and he gets those post-ups, maybe he can take them to the next level there. Uh, and as we pointed out, all the other guys, they're not going to get anything from the bench. Like there's four guys uh, because I'm excluding Danny green right now, because like we said, I do not see another game to this degree. There's four guys that can really hurt you like all together in a playoff game that, you know, what Embiid's going to give you, you're going to double off these shooters. Uh, the Tobias factor, I think you saw what they want to get to where they're okay with putting Kyle Lowry on him at times. I think uh, speaking of off ball movement offensively, there was some off ball uh, misinputs offensively where there was plenty of times where I saw if it was Kyle yelling at Struess or Struess yelling at Kyle. It was a lot of those instances where they just had uh, it kind of ties into the intensity and focus thing because I just feel like the off ball stuff and they were just, uh, I kind of wonder if it was, uh, they were so focused on the Embiid thing because so many people were that it was like, watch the ball, watch Embiid getting it in the entry pass. Just keep eyeing Embiid because that's all everybody can talk about constantly. Um, and the other thing I do want to say to your points about kind of everybody kind of playing your worst case scenario, uh, this game kind of comes together, like in all honesty, where this is exactly who the C team is, in my opinion, like they're a contender even with the offensive patchiness where they can have nights like this, like they're going to have a night where this is going to happen, where their half court issues are going to be problematic, where certain guys aren't aggressive, or maybe they shoot. Uh, what was it? What was the shooting tonight? 23% from three. Mm -hmm. But the reason they're still in contention and they're able to have these games is because their defense is so absolutely elite that this, it, it really, I don't think it should come to shock to a lot of people because I feel like this is what we knew this team was going to be all year. Like there's going to be games where they pop, they shoot above their, their heads. There's going to be games where Jimmy has a game. There's going to be a game where Bam has a game. But ultimately the defense is what's going to carry them over the edge. It just means that there has to be some level of consistency when it really matters uh, in the half court specifically because that is just the one weakness of this team that we've hit on all season. And if that can hit at the right time, like this is a very – you see Jimmy after these games say 11 more, 10 more. Mm -hmm. Like there's limited games that you have to hit on. If you could just hit on the majority of those games and kind of correct that weakness, that's just exactly what this team is. And that's how you make a run. It's so weird though, looking at the box here, because I mean, they only gave up 99 points, even though the Sixers shot 49% from three, yeah. right? Uh, 16 of 33. And it's because the, the possessions were down. Uh, the fouls, the Heat fans can't complain about fouls. The, the, the Sixers committed two more fouls than the Heat did tonight. So it, and you, the Heat they, took care of the ball. What did the, they have, like 10 and, turnovers, 11, the Heat, And 12? the Heat did, and the Sixers didn't, which is why this thing stayed close. I mean, it really – the Heat took 77 shots tonight, and the Sixers took 67, okay? But – so they took 10 more shots, which is the object here, and they made five fewer. OK, and, and that's that's five fewer, you know, overall. But then if you're the three point line, they made nine fewer total. So, I mean, it, it really does come down to shooting, but I'm not going to just blame it on an off shooting night. There, there were things they were not doing offensively that led to shots that you don't necessarily want to take. I, I would be curious to see the contested uncontested numbers after this game. But again, it felt to me like a lot of late shot clock stuff, no movement fall away stuff and it was really the biggest culprit for that in the first half was jimmy and then he was the only one that carried them in the second half so you know when we come back i want to talk about you know the one kind of elephant in the room here which is you have a shooter on your bench who made eight threes in game one of the first round maybe it's time we'll talk about that after this break we do want to tell you about a great sponsor of the five reasons sports network therapistpreferred.com Again, go to therapistpreferred.com for all of your premium CBD, the sports cream, the gummies, the tincture. You can get it all there for 25% off using the code 5RSN. That's the number 5RSN. Again, this is great stuff. It helps you recover. It helps you sleep. It's perfectly legal. You will not fail a drug test. There's no problems with it whatsoever. Okay, it's terrific. And a lot of our, our, uh, our listeners here 
uh, have reached out to them. So go to therapistpreferred.com, use the code 5RSN. We know there's a lot of CBD on the market. There's a reason that we're promoting this one. It's because the results that everybody's had with it. Again, use the code 5RSN at therapistpreferred.com. How the tide has turned, right? Um, I did notice that Spolscher did not throw Duncan Robinson out for the two garbage time minutes tonight. Um, because we've discussed that. I was a little surprised that he threw it's like Duncan a sign out. of respect usually. Right. Well, right. I mean, he, but he did throw him out there for the last 59 seconds of game two, which I, I felt sort of badly for Duncan there. Um, he put out high Smith Martin, uh, who has been a rotation player this year and Yurtsevin. Uh, for those with, with uh, I don't I don't know who was still out there at that point. It might have been Gabe and Deadman, but he basically threw those. I think three Tyler guys. was out there at that point. Ty, Ty, yeah, Tyler might have been out there till the end. So, but he did he did insert Highsmith, Martin, and Deadman. But he did not insert Robinson, and that's not how Duncan wants to be playing anyway. Because <laughs> you're talking about a former starter on a finals team. I mean, is it time, Brady? I mean, it was was Max was I guess Max is three of eleven tonight, all from three, one rebound, one assist. Like you said, I, Kyle was on him a couple times was noticeable on some defensive rotations, leading, leaving Danny green, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, everybody's entitled to an off night. He's now 20 and four as a starter. So obviously it's worked, but when, when do you hit the point where you say, okay, we're going to see what the former starter could do. Not as a starter, not as a starter. Struis is going to start, but somewhere in the mix here. Yeah, I think it's possible. I want to say first that if it happens, I don't think it cuts into Struis's minutes at all. Like I think, the one guy I think it could cut into his minutes, I think Gabe possibly at this stage. And I'm not saying I think he's been perfect in his role, but I think at this stage, if you see Kyle coming back and you have Depot now, you don't need that extra ball handler. Like we're talking about a lot of this, that you can use an extra spacer. Uh, I do think it's really funny, though, just seeing in your mentions going through it and seeing how often it was early in the season where everybody's Duncan should never be playing in this rotation. They should go to this guy. They need to play all the Depot more. And now it's, what is Eric Spolstra doing? Why is he not playing this shooter that they paid this money to and not utilizing him correctly? Uh, it, it is kind of funny, but it's my only thing I'll push back a little bit on it for is comparing it to the Max Struess thing is we're sitting here in this whole pod talking about Bam not being aggressive and Kyle not being aggressive. There's been a lot of points in games like this where the issue with Duncan has been he's not aggressive enough where like he's not getting shots up. And that's the one thing you want him to do. The one thing you're going to get from max, whether you like it or not, is he's going to get the ball up. Like he took 11 threes. He was three of 11 from the field tonight. Uh, th that's kind of what you want in a game like this. You want a guy that's going to get the ball up a ton. Maybe not a guy that's going to go one for four instead of three of 11. Like that's uh, kind of where I come down on it. But I think moving forward, I don't know if it's a game four tweak. Maybe it's if you, I know you don't want to, kind of prepare for a 2-2 but I think the adjustment will be Duncan over Gabe I said before this game if Kyle didn't play like I, I was pretty confident saying that Duncan would play this game like it felt like the, the handoffs they could go to more uh, which may feed into the point earlier and Bead playing higher would make it a little bit tougher at times I guess but they can adjust from there and it just creates that extra spacer uh, that I'm interested to see if, if maybe they go Duncan over Gabe like I'm not at the point where I'm saying all the depot like they're going to just kind of cut down on all the depots minutes. You saw him tonight. Uh, Hero was at 27 minutes and, and Depot was at 21. Like he's still getting run that I don't think it was problematic at all. Uh, and you still need the def defensive stuff. Like there was some times where uh, you need that guy that's going to pressure James Harden and, and kind of hold him in that second half to certain things. But uh, I think there's times in this series where you're looking at it and you're talking about 23% shooting. You got to put that extra shooter in there. I mean, is it concerning to you, Greg, that, Hero only played 27 minutes tonight because, yeah. you know, I mean, be, right. Because I mean, you I play the same as Max, right? This, right. I mean, I, you know, I, I, again, Tyler had bad moments tonight. Okay. Um, but, but, but he to was your the point, only, he was the only other person generating anything. And I, I yeah. just wonder if we're getting to the point now, and now we're trying to insert Duncan back in the mix, which further complicates it. But, we're getting to the point now where having too many players that are playable is eating into, you know, the minutes of the guys who need to be playing a lot. Right. Like, I mean, I'm looking tonight. Okay. Jimmy played 38 was totally appropriate. And like Brady said, being out at the beginning of the fourth hurt them. PJ played 35 was he had eight rebounds. It wasn't particularly effective tonight compared to recent games. Bam played 34. 
you know, but you threw, you know, you added the Kyle's 25 minutes. Gabe still got 15. Uh, and Ola Depot and Hero, you know, they didn't split the 48 because they played together some, but they combined for 48 minutes. And, you know, I think and, we thought going into the playoffs before we knew if Ola Depot would be healthy and all these guys would be healthy, that Tyler Hero was going to be in the 30s with his minutes, not 27. That That's where I think we're heading for game four. I think that you're going to see also the potential that Spolstra, because these guys didn't log heavy minutes in this game, um, <clears throat> maybe he shortens the rotation a bit and kind of squeezes guys out and consolidates to the point where Tyler hero is playing 32, 33 minutes. Um, you know, that, that, that's the one thing about a game like this where Jimmy was kind of carrying them in the second half. It's not really like to, for me, I, I am not at the stage where I think, okay, now it's for Jimmy to need help. We're going to give the ball to Bam and clear out. It's really incumbent on Hero to step up. He wasn't in foul trouble. So with an inefficient game the way that he had, kind of the next uh, the next evolution of Tyler Hero is being able to survive getting to the free throw line in a game like this and not being so reliant on everything being just um, – from the outside so that you can start to generate additional offense because like, that's what they need him to be. Eventually uh, I'm not going to overreact to one night, but that, you know, that's the one thing with Tyler that in a game like this, where they need offense and they need to get settled, you're hoping that that's what he's maturing into the player that can get you into that kind of uh, offensive flow on the road. All right. That's where we're going to close things tonight. Thanks to Greg. Thanks to Brady. Check out our sponsors, prizepicks.com use the code five F I V E therapistpreferred.com use the code five RSN. And if you need a personal injury attorney for anything, reach out to our friend, Eric Rubenstein at nine, five, four, eight, two, nine E R I C. We will likely be back Sunday night after uh, the heat Sixers game four. And then obviously Tuesday night. Now that one set um, another matchup at home, heat Sixers game five as the Sixers win tonight and the heat lead two one in the series. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.